and uh, and hand over to you, Shivin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul, for this warm introduction. And thank you uh, and welcome, everyone. So let me share my screen. And OK, so uh, I'm really very excited to be here with you. Um, and before we dive into the fascinating world of gamification, I thought it would be great if we could get to know each other a little better. And um, Let's do this in a fun way, in an engaging way. Uh, so we'll play a game and it's called Two Truths and a Lie. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you have played this game in your classrooms as well. So I will share two true things about my experience with gamification and one that's not true. And your task is to guess which one is not true. OK, so here we go. Here you can see three places. Please post your guesses in the chat. And okay, um, is it number one, number two, or number three? That is not true. Okay, so lots of guesses. Right, I think the majority of you found the answer. So yes, um, yeah, this is um, it. It was number three. That's true. That which is not true. Um, despite my interest in gamification, I don't have much experience with video games. I played some, but I wasn't really, a, I, I'm not a gamer, uh, but I'm interested in gamification. So gamification is a strategy to enhance, to increase um, user engagement, user motivation. And it's not limited to video games. We'll talk about this in more detail. So, um, and this is an, it, one activity to get the ball rolling, uh, but I also want to tell you a little bit about my pr uh, previous experience with gamification. Yes, I started my journey when I was at university with gamification and with games actually, because I was in youth work, I was a youth leader as a volunteer, I worked with youth organizations, and uh, in those youth organizations projects, um, we used to play lots of games like icebreakers, warmers, especially I enjoyed the simulation games. And when I started teaching, I already knew lots of games. So this was my first introduction. And uh, I worked for the British Council in Turkey. And during that time, we wanted to increase um, in engagement with teachers. And uh, blogging was very pop popular at that time. And we wanted uh, to increase um, teachers experience with blogging as well so we came up with an idea of um, gamified professional development activity i'll tell you more about this in the next slides so let's go through the learning outcomes for today very briefly uh, so we'll first start with um, our experience with games and gamification i already uh, shared some of my experience and i'd like to hear from you as well and then we will discuss uh, the difference between play game game based learning and gamification uh, these terms are sometimes used interchangeably but, but there are some differences we will uh, discuss the differences and we'll learn more about game elements and mechanics so what are they we will discuss and then we'll see the player types I'll share some classroom examples with you, and then uh, I will share some important points to consider uh, when incorporating gamification. So then we'll have a Q&A in the end. So if you have any questions, please um, feel free to write them in the chat or Q&A, actually. Q&A would be better. So um, before this session, we had a pre-webinar activity. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas in this activity. So we asked you what gamification tools and activities you have used in your classroom. And you already shared some ideas and I put them all in the handout. In the, uh, you can download it um, from the Teaching English website. Um, so um, I will also um, mention this again, but I, I just... Uh, copied two um, posts from your um, contributions in the pre-webinar activity. So please have a look at them. So these are two different views from teachers about gamification. So um, it's interesting to see the um, diverse approaches to gamification. So as you can see, one teacher mentioned that he or she doesn't use specific gamification tools. Um, but 
they incorporate gamification activities. So this shows that you don't always need specialized tools to gamify your um, activities. Uh, as teachers, we have the creativity to turn even the uh, simplest activities into games uh, to engage or motivate our students. Um, so, um, but on the other hand, another teacher has shared that um, they share various tools to gamify their classroom. So there are lots of tools available and you already shared some of them. You, you keep sharing in the chat. Um, so there are those game uh, principles and um, in these tools, they are embedded already. So if you use them, you have a more structured approach and they help you save time. But um, there is no right or wrong way to incorporate gamification. It all comes down to what suits you or what your students' needs are or, or your competencies, your access to resources. Uh, so, but gamification can be done in low resource classrooms as well. So if you don't have access to technology, you can also game, you can gamify your classrooms by being creative and by using your um, existing resources. So, um, let me give you one example, this blogging example. So um, when I uh, worked for the British Council, I told you I, uh, we wanted to integrate gamification in one of those activities and we designed a, a blogathon. So imagine transforming a marathon into a blogging challenge for teachers. And this event encouraged teachers to engage um, in an exciting race of knowledge sharing and it enabled them to uh, blog um, about their classroom experiences, um, ideas, um, best practices, innovative ideas uh, over a month. And then the winners had the opportunity to go to IATF conference and they blogged from there as rowing reporters. And we had this activity for three years in a row. And it had some game design elements. Uh, for example, the participants had avatars, um, there were certain dates, start and finish dates, competition, levels, prizes. So this game uh, gamified activity had truly impacted uh, the way I approach gamification uh, because I learned about these you know game game principles. So uh, because the, the design process also took a lot of time, thinking and creativity. Uh, so it, it uh, also had um, some um, impact, I think, on the participants. Uh, professional lives as well as you can see in testimonial i'd like to find out more about your um uh, previous experience with gamification and games as well so what games have you played so far maybe when you were a child with your students with your children so please keep uh writing uh in the chat so for example um, excellent. Joe says, I love using ChatGPT to write the content. This is a great benefit, I think, of ChatGPT. Now, it helps us save time. Uh, I will mention this as well. Uh, you also share lots of useful tools that you can use. Uh, please just type the games that you play. Uh, it doesn't have to be a digital game, okay? So board games, yes. Um, Kahoot, role-playing games. Simon says, yes, this is a classical, Pictionary, Bingo, Scrabble, Word Wall, excellent. We love, as English teachers, we love playing games, right? So this is one of the best things about our um, subject area. Okay, so please keep writing in the chat. And now I want to ask another question. So uh, game and play. So in English, there, these are two di distinct concepts. I'm Turkish and in Turkish we, um, we have the same word for game or play, but in English, they are different. What's the difference? What do you think? What's the difference between game and play? What are the main differences? Play is the action. Game is structured, Christina. That's correct. And yes, uh, what else? game you can win yes you can win with a game game have games have winners you can play with anything mm -hmm. game with okay game has a purpose thank you that's correct oops it uh flows quickly 
Okay, so excellent. Thank you. Yes, game is competitive. Mm -hmm. Game and result. Okay. Um, well, um, the main uh, difference is that while play refers to a more unstructured or spontaneous form of activity, such as uh, a child playing with toys, boys, cars, without any restrictions, rules, uh, but the game has more... Um, like more, more structured and purposeful. It's more purposeful activity. So we can define a game as an enjoyable activity that involves um, mechanics, specific rules, a defined purpose, objectives, competition, measurable outcomes. So um, have you played this game, Hopscotch, when you were a child? The one on the right. Have you played this? Okay, it was one of my favorites. Of course, yes. And okay, let's um, analyze this game. Uh, so uh, what is, there is a specific objective here. What is the specific objective here in this game? Um, Pico in Philippines, okay, <laughs> nice. What is the objective of this game? The stone you throw is it's not the objective. I, I'm just I, I just want you to tell me what is the goal of this game? What do you what do you need to do? Uh-huh. Yes, what is the aim? Count. Yes, it's it's completing the numbers, right? It's completing the numbers in order. And what are the rules? Do you remember the rules? What are the rules of this game? No rules? No, there are some rules there. Not stepping on the lines or, yeah, in order, yes. And throwing the stone into the correct square, yeah. And the mechanics. Mechanics are the, um, the actions the players um, perform. Uh, the more mechanics you have, the more enjoyable a game is. But um, if you have... Five mechanics, more than five, is a game is com uh, considered as complex. So there shouldn't be too many mechanics as well. What are the actions mechanics? So jumping, yeah, jumping and um, yes, physical skills. Um, throwing the stone is also mechanics. And these are all game elements. These are called game elements. And there is a winning and losing situation and uh, both competition and enjoyment are there. So this is a game. So if we look again, these are the elements, game elements. So rules, purpose, objectives, competition, winning, losing, progression, difficulty, mechanics. So these are all game elements, okay? Let's give another example this time. Super Mario, the pioneer of digital games. Have you played this before? It's, it has become popular again, I think, these days. Um, but yes, we are the first generation who played the first versions. So um, in this game, the main objective is to rescue the princess. And if you remember, the mechanics are the actions um, performed by uh, Super Mario. Jumping, running, walking to progress and collecting points. And as the player plays, they collect points and come across some uh, mushrooms that boosts um, Mario's abilities. And um, there are also some challenges, um, including turtles, dragons, time, and um, levels also play a significant role in the game. And each level incorporates a time element that adds to the challenge. So um, now we saw the game, right? We, we have now um, an idea about what a game involves. So it involves mechanics, um, challenges, and but it's for entertainment, right? Uh, remember the two examples. What is the difference between the uh, game-based learning and gamification? So can you talk, just think about it? You don't... Um, need to type your ideas in the chat, but if you would like to, um, please do. So what is the difference between these concepts, game-based learning and gamification? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
learning language through games. Yes, I think you are referring to um, game-based learning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Game is just for fun. Very good point. Game-based learning is achieving learning outcomes through games. That's very clear. Thank you so much. So just to recap once again. So games are for entertainment, for competition. Game-based learning is using a game to facilitate learning. For example, you are playing uh, Pictionary, running dictation, um, so word association games, these are all game-based learning. You are using a game to facilitate your students' learning. But if you are using game elements in non-game context, this is gamification. So um, what, what does non-game context is? So remember the previous example I shared with you, vlogging marathon, and it was implemented in a teacher training context. So it's a non-game context. You might also have some apps on your um, computer, like fitness apps, like a game um, with, with, uh, with some game elements in it to encourage people to do more sports. So it's a fitness is a non-game context or in some business contexts, they use gamification to increase employees' motivation, performance. So this, this is also another example of non-game context. So if you use those game elements that we'll see in a minute, then um, you are game, using gamification. What are these game elements? So let's have a look at them. So I'll give you some words about some game elements. And um, you try to guess what, uh, what they are, okay? So when you finish, I'll show you the complete list and you uh, try to, um, yes, you try to guess and then you correct your answers. Um, Christina, excellent. Yes, scoring system, levels, leaderboards, challenges. So please just, you know, try to guess what they are. You can write the ones that you have found. Yes, the, all of these um, ideas that you have written in the chat are correct. They are all game elements. So you, you are perhaps using gamification already. So if you are using these elements, let me show you the correct answers. Okay. So yes, these are the things that make up a game. Yeah. And the most frequently uh, used elements are feedback, points, um, quiz, digital badges, leaderboard rewards, followed by progress bar storytelling, challenges, time limits, and competition. So these are all game elements, but there are even more. These are only some of them. Uh, but uh, I, we will um, see some examples how they are incorporated. Let me give you an example. You mentioned Scrabble earlier. So um, Scrabble is a vocabulary game, right? A teacher could use Scrabble to enhance students' vocabulary skills. And students follow the game by following the predefined rules. Um, and they, they are learning while playing, right? If we have Scrabble, if we play Scrabble with our students, then we are, um, by, by the rules, we are using Scrabble as a game-based learning activity. And um, it occurs, I mean, learning occurs while playing. But if we want to uh, add some, gamification elements. So instead of just playing Scrabble as a game in class, you could incorporate Scrabble into a broader structure in a gamified way. So what can you do? You can you can assign points uh, for uh, various levels of word complexity. For example, you can say basic words could worth one point, intermediate words, five points, advanced words, 10 points, you, your students could earn badges or uh, levels for crossing some certain uh, point thresholds. In this way, playing Scrabble isn't just a game played for its own sake, but it's you are adding an extra layer of engagement and motivation for the students. This is gamification. So if you are adding those, you know, additional gamification elements, um, this is gamification. Let's gamify another activity. So we all played bingo, right? Let's imagine we play bingo um, 
to illustrate, consider teaching of past tense, past simple or recycling English vocabulary. And what gamification elements would you use to gamify bingo? So the simple bingo activity, how can we add, to what, which um, gamification elements would you use to gamify it? Badge, yes, a great idea. Mm -hmm. Competition, rewards, scores, yes, complete points, excellent. Yes, now you have um, some very good ideas. So in this scenario, uh, we can, um, the teacher, you can introduce um, a system where students earn points for each correctly answered question, or you can, um, your students might level up or they can earn badges, as you also suggested. So the classroom in this, um, by this way, the classroom has been gamified. And this introduction of points, levels, badges, incorporates the elements of game design into the learning experience. So this is gamification, okay? So um, some other examples of gamification. So if you are separating your students into groups to compete on activities, if you are enabling your students to earn points, or if you have some badges to show completion of work, or if you're using dice in different ways, for example, to generate random numbers uh, for, for a worksheet activity, uh, you, are, you are gamifying your classroom activities. So in other examples, are there any other examples that you would like to share with us? If you can decide on the, um, on the badges. It's all, you know, um, depends on your creativity. Okay, so what, anybody who has examples, please type your ideas. Interaction, okay. Leaderboards, mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. Prizes. Okay, excellent. So I also want to tell you about player types. Okay, this is um, a very important area, I think, because it's about getting to know our students. So, um, let me give you an example. Okay, so it's like an overlap between uh, game design and gamification. And the better you understand your players, the better you can cater to their needs. And we all have these player types. And there is a simple measure designed by somebody called Richard Bartel. And um, he broke up the, the way people play uh, games into four simple categories. For example, there are achievers, explorers, socializers, and killers. Just to give you one example of these, and you tell me which category you uh, belong to. So achievers are um, all about points and status. They want to be able to show their friends uh, how they are wonderful, how they are progressing. They like to collect badges and put them on display. Um, explorers want to see new things and discover new things for them. They are not bothered about points um, or prizes. Discovery is the price for them. Socializers, uh, the vast majority of players are socializers. That's almost 8%, according to him. And socializers experience fun in their games through their interaction with other players. So they want to interact with other players. And killers are similar to achievers in the way they get, you know, excitement from gaining points, but um, they want to see other people lose as well. I'm sure you had some killer friends <laughs> when you were, uh, you know, when you were a child. So, or when, when you know, in the classroom, you had some students with these different personalities. So it's important to keep this in mind uh, because you know you might want to group your students accordingly. You wouldn't like to put two killers in the same team, right? So think about their characteristics and how they uh, want to 
engage with each other uh, as well. Okay, so let's move on to some classroom examples. So I want to give you some examples. Of course, these are just, you know, um, um, some examples, but there are more uh, in the chat. And um, we will, I, I also put some, some of my favorite um, activities in the handout as well, which you can uh, download from the website, from Teaching English website. So for example, um, experience points are very popular. So it's, um, they are like actual points for students. These points are earned by completing an assignment uh, or assignments or tasks, uh, a number of assignments and tasks or things like that. And the more points earned, the higher grades the student would achieve, so uh, receive. So you can um, decide, you know, how to use those, how students would use these experience points. And you can make this even more sophisticated by creating a class-wide achievements. For example, if one student gets uh, 200 points, experience points, the whole class gets a free bonus or a system like this. So in order to encourage the classroom um, community to help each other, so these are, um, th th this can work in different ways. You can decide how you want to um, distribute the numbers, how you want your students to use the, those numbers. Uh, you can incorporate it with an electronic portfolio. Uh, this can also um, make it more transparent so you can um, easily engage uh, with, help your students engage with assignments and tasks in a gamified way, in a different way. And treasure hunts, I really like them. So in a traditional treasure hunt, someone provides the players with clues and the players must then use the, these clues to find more clues, locations or hidden items. Uh, I used to um, design treasure hunts a lot because we, we had this at our university once a year. And we had great fun. So I know it was great fun. I also wanted to um, create those, you know, enjoyable experiences for my students. And I spent a long time to design the content, you know, the, the, the hints, clues. But now we have ChatGPT. If you have some, you know, target vocabulary that you want to uh, include, um, so anything that you want to ask your students or want them uh, to cover or uh, learn again, you can include it in, in the prompts to the chat GPT and that, then it can create some excellent um, hints, excellent um, challenges, clues, um, and yes, um, questions for you. So I created just a very simple one. Um, so this can be played in the backyard or you can use the school building um, or you can um, even have it um, with the classroom, uh, within the classroom using your course book. Um, so you can also have a treasure hunt using your course book. So you can be as creative as you want and ChatGPT might help you come up with um, the best clues and um, it can even, you know, write stories, little poems, and your students need to read them, understand them and find the clues. And then they need to be creative to find the um, secret locations, hidden items. So it's great fun. I think it's worth trying. And as I mentioned before, the um, web tools for gamification are great. There are lots of tools you will find in this handout, you will find uh, some descriptions. Um, but um, you need to go and uh, try those tools yourself. So um, there are really very useful tools. Some tools like Kahoot, Class Dojo, Flickers, um, and yes, there are more new tools as well uh, that you can implement. Please try out. Um, I think you first need to feel competent yourself to use these tools in your classroom before you use them in, in your classrooms. You can uh, test it with your colleagues in the staff room. Um, and then you can, um, once you feel com uh, confident, you can try out with them. You can ask some students for help to help you design the content of these 
uh, gamified activities if you want to use them. You might have some challenging moments. For example, when I first used clickers in the classroom, it didn't work because um, it's about uh, mobile you, uh, you, mobile phones and QR codes. So it didn't really work. And I decided not to use it again, but um, because of my um, unreliable internet connection. So, uh, but I used some other tools. So I changed um, my plans. Uh, but yes, so don't feel discouraged if, if something goes wrong. Uh, try again, uh, because if you really have some, uh, if you have access to the technology in the classroom, first step is planning. Pedagogy always leads technology. Uh, planning and, you know, just like our lesson plans, we need to have a plan because our students know these tools um, naturally, maybe they may not be aware of these tools, but they know the gamified game gamification principles. So it's important to um, have them on board. So that requires some planning. Really, planning is the key. So I also want to um, add some important points to consider. First of all, um, gamification allows individuals to understand that failure is not an end. This is one of the benefits of gamification. So research suggests that gamification allows individuals um, uh, to, uh, in, to understand that uh, making mistakes uh, is okay. They gain experience and enabling individuals to reach their goals. So failure is not an end. This is one of the benefits. And additionally, game elements such as points, badges, and leaderboards can assist um, you in providing feedback to your students. So if you are using a tool, especially the tools also provide you with feedback. So which students uh, achieved, how many questions answered, which of the questions uh, the classroom failed to answer. So you can get feedback from the uh, tools as well, or you can just you know, um, observe your students. Um, competition, we mentioned competition, but um, co collaboration, uh, competition is not really necessary. Well, I will tell you the um, negative effect of competition, but collaboration is more uh, important, I think, when designing gamified learning experiences. Um, so collaboration and meaningful feedback are more important. And gamification is not a perfect approach. So we need to keep this in mind. There are lots of drawbacks. If you are using a tool, there might be some technical problems. Um, some gamified elements like leaderboard or competition might scare off some children um, and um, it may not improve their academic performance. Uh, in addition, um, once the novelty of gamification has worn off, the positive influence of gamification might be short-lived. So we need to be aware of that. So it's a double-edged sword. So for students who are bored, who don't have motivation to learn, um, rewards and um, incentives might work. So it might increase their motivation, but if they are already motivated, if you have students, who are already motivated to learn. Uh, gamified learning activities might harm their intrinsic motivation. So that's um, one of the things we need to remember. So it's, um, it's a critical de decision. Timing is very important. Your topic is important. And people get bored uh, and give up when they do things that are easier uh, than what they are capable of. Or similarly, they get frustrated again to and they might quit halfway if they do things that are more challenging um, than what they can handle. So we need to um, design um, these difficulty level. In, uh, it's very important. And decide on an engaging topic as well. Um, if you want to bring excitement to the classroom, you, you need to find a topic. So the possibilities are um, limitless. You can transform your classroom into an exciting outer space uh, or you know your students can be astronauts or superheroes so you can um, also empower your students to become co-creators of this engaging learning environment 
um, so they can bring fashion costumes, they develop their unique characters. So I think if we design this for with the students, it would be even better. Uh, or maybe you can have a group of students, you know, you know who can help you um, design gamification, um, gamified uh, learning experience. Um, so these are the main things, uh, but yes, the most important one, uh, some students also, uh, if you introduce a gamified activity, they may react because they have been maybe accustomed to more traditional teaching methods before they are exposed to a novel gamification teaching. So if you, it's difficult for these students to adjust immediately. Um, and the use of badges, you know, there are things like, the, if there are too many rules, too many things, it might be also a bit complicated for the students. Uh, so they shouldn't feel overwhelmed or um, this might uh, make them motivating. Or if there are too many, the feeling of comp competition, uh, competition for rewards um, might also affect introverts negatively they might think they can they won't be successful or they can lose their hope so there are things that you need to do uh, it's a great way to motivate students on the other hand it needs to be designed well well thought planned well so um, it's important to take these into account when you're designing a gamified classroom activity uh, but yes, on the other hand, it's worth trying, I think, if you are interested in gamification, um, you, you can give it a try and learn from your um, experience. Ask students for feedback to improve. Um, yes, so that's, um, I think that's all from me. And thank you so much for listening. I would like to answer your questions as well. And um, yes, your comments as well. So Monica says sometimes games um, are distraction. Yes, they can be if it's not planned well. It needs to be coherent. Imagine, you know, students play digital games and they are familiar with this, you know, gaming atmosphere. And if we want to use, uh, I think simple is better um think sim simple simply uh, start simple and um instead of having too many badges uh rules and mechanics so try to incorporate some you know slowly slowly you can improve your gamified um experiences and thank you so much so any questions let me have a look at the q a okay so that there are some questions Lots uh, of questions, Shirin, yes. <laughs> it's got some of them are really long, so I will uh, need to read them. So thank you for your patience. But um, we've got one from a uh, face, couple of questions from um, people on Facebook, actually. Maybe we can uh, answer those if possible. Uh, I know there are a lot in the Q&A here, uh, but this is a question from Robert Baumgartner. Um, do you have any advice on the use of Minecraft? in English teaching? <laughs> well, yes, this there are lots of um, people using Minecraft in education. And they have, um, it's, I think it's um, now established. There are lots of tips from other teachers too. I haven't used it in my classrooms, but students play it, they love it. And they mm -hmm. there are really lots of tips from other teachers it's been played for for a long time um, and I follow some of those people so it would be really useful to get to know you know how they, they can get the best out of this mm -hmm. and um, yeah there are lots of resources available about Minecraft and education okay thanks um, and then a question from Sa Fa uh, can I ask my students to give ideas about games they want us to play and present in class? Is that something that you would encourage? Um, yes, this is a very good question. On the one hand, if you 
increase their expectation if they their game is not played you know they would that would also discourage them so try to balance their expectations maybe you can have a box and ask mm -hmm. students to put their ideas and then you know you can evaluate later on and you tell them that you may not have time to play all of these uh, so maybe you know you need to um decree you know balance their expectations because otherwise they get really upset if their game is not played or if you play another student's game not you know their game so mm -hmm. uh, might create a um, chaos in the classroom so just bear in mind uh, and try right. to balance that okay thank you good hopefully that's answered those questions um so I know you're going through the, the Q and A. Uh, just another, just another one from Zinia Ali. Uh, gamification and the, the negative aspects. D does gamification have negative aspects as well? Yes, uh. lots. I mean, the, we we mentioned some of these. So, yeah. um, um, just to just to summarize, if your game is not designed well, um, or if you have too many, um bad or competition elements, it can also be harmful for some students, especially introverts. Um, mm -hmm. Or we said it's, um, if you are using a web tool, if you are not familiar with the web tool, it might, uh, you might have some technical problems. Mm -hmm. uh, leaderboard might scare off some children. Some wants to be in the, you know, the um, achievers, some uh, will be quiet and, um, or the, it's a, if you if your game is too easy, they might lose their motivation. If it's too difficult, again, they won't be interested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it, it requires some thinking uh, and getting feedback from other colleagues from students is would be great before you implement a game fire activity. For example, if you are planning to, uh, have a treasure hunt, a school treasure hunt. It's always a good idea to um, try it first, uh, mm -hmm. how it works, the experience, uh, before you um, share it with the students. Okay. Thank you. So I'll let you get back to the looking at the, the Q&A. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Paul. Um, let me check um, how can teachers manage expectation among their students when playing games? Some students should be given throwing uh, get emo when losing. Are there uh, the issues of competition among students? How does uh, ensure a healthy competitive? Well, this is uh, not very easy. Uh, it's also, it's about, I think, at the beginning of the game, the rules need to be really clear, make sure they understand, you know, ask uh, instruction checking questions to make sure the games are um, fair play is important, so we shouldn't we would we don't want um, students to compete and at the same time have a you know a, a negative classroom environment. So uh, cooperation is better. That's why I suggested rather than a competitive environment, a cooperative learning environment is suggested. Marisha. But if you have, uh, if you want to have a competition, make sure uh, you have the rules. You agree on the rules with the students at the beginning, and uh, yeah, try to. I mean, we, 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 there are two rules, right, in all games, so they need to learn how to play. And Maria says, I group my students whenever we have gaming activities. I group them according to their level. However, some students would complain, complain saying that they want to be grouped with their friends. Um, well, if well, sometimes you can group them with their friends. I think if you, it depends on how often you play games. Um, different, you know, variety is the keyword here. We don't always we we shouldn't, of course, ask them to um, group to be grouped. Um, in with their friends at all times um, but yeah from time to time why not give them this you know luxury um, and th there, there is also a very interesting statistic it was uh, found that short-term gamification teaching with a total duration of less than 21 days um, could be could have the disadvantages so if you want to 
have your students to have this habit of gamification, you need to play games more than 21 days. So after that, it becomes a habit. So, you know, um, maybe once you, how we establish this, this gamified learning classroom structure is important. Uh, you can say this time you will be, uh, you will play uh, with a group, but next time you you can be grouped with their with your friends. So uh, again, you need to negotiate with them. And Fatma says, do you think learning through competition could be helpful and safe? Again, yes, collaboration is always better. You know, it it might be demotivating for low achievers. Fatma, exactly as you stated. And um, yes, Manuel says, one challenge I find in gamification that learners tend to focus more on rewards and points more than the learning. Yes, this is, I mean, that, that's the fun part. It's normal. That's why we want, we, we, we want them to play. They are not, we wouldn't expect them to focus on the learning part, right? That would be really surprising, at least for the majority. But if they will be learning, if you design it in, in such a way, I mean, you need to design it in such a way that they will learn, but they won't, um, they will do it unconsciously or, you know, they won't feel that they are learning, but they will be learning. They will be practicing something, although they, their focus is on the rewards and points, because that's the fun part. That's what makes them happy. Uh, but at the same time, if a game is designed well, they will be learning as well. And Maria says, we did treasure hunt before while it was fun and successful. It's gotten quite chaotic. Students were flipping chairs and tables. Everything was quite a mess. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, what should I do in this situation? Uh, well, if you um, tried it in a the classroom, then of course it will be, it might be uh, quite chaotic. Maybe you can try it outside if you have a backyard. You know, I tried it. Um, with, within the school building it worked also well so yes maybe you can just you know um, try again with a different setup um, using technology which do you prefer using technology such as phones or computers using classroom objects well all of them are tools you know to help us um, depends on what your aims are. I think what we want to do. We don't just want to use technology for you know for the sake of using it. If we, if it's going to help us, uh, if 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 it's going to make our lives easier, if there is a purpose, then why not use it? We use them, phone or computer. And how does how does this work while well, teaching adult learners? Well, we need to, of course, think about adult learning principles. For example, we use the digital board game with adult learners, with teacher educators. It worked really well. Um, so I um, I can't remember the name of it, but maybe you you know some of our participants might know. So. Um, you can create a board game online uh, because we have a group of participants in, an, in, in, in a course for teacher educators. And we used a, a, a wheel, two different uh, gamified activities and a board game, an online board game, and they really worked well. And adults like enjoy learning as well. Um, a, well it's it shouldn't be too too childish of course for adult learners for university students um and yeah you can just try you know um and get feedback from them rabia has shared thank you so much rabia yes this is the one that we used if you look at the chat this is the activity that we used and it takes it might take some more time so make sure you allocate enough time for this gamified activity if you want to play um such a game in in, in a very short time it doesn't really feel you, you the, the participants doesn't really they don't really feel the sense of the activity the gamified activity you need to make sure you have uh, allocated enough time to a gamified um, activity if you don't have enough time then don't play it because it's not good to um, play and cut in the middle and say no we need to move to the lesson now because you know it needs to there needs to be a, a smooth transition to the um, other parts of the lesson 
and students love to help setting the rules in a game. Yes, they they would love to do that. Um, you can keep a timekeeper, Sabe. Ask students to keep time. Um, and yes, you 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 need to have a timekeeper, I guess. Um, what what is the most important thing to be taken into consideration while designing gamified learning lessons? What can improve the effectiveness of gamify gamification lessons? Um, First of all, uh, you learned about, we discussed the game, gamification elements. Um, if you want to gamify um, a session, you need to use some of these elements. Um, I, I mentioned this before. If you use too many elements, um, it will make it more complicated, but uh, there needs to be some um, actions as well, some things that the player needs to do. So. Um, I think the design pro process is important. So you need to plan it well. Uh, it's just like, you know, lesson planning. Game design uh, requires some creativity. Um, but you can always, I think now, um, that's one of the um, benefits of these assistive technologies. If you have some ideas, you can um, use ChatGPT to come up with some other ideas uh, for you to gamify your classrooms. And as I, uh, as we all know, our students um, play games, they, they enjoy, they are more familiar with the game principles and you can get help from them as well to improve your game design. Um, what else? Are these terms interchangeable? Gamification is using game elements in game context, but bingo itself is a board game. Yes, so bingo itself is a board game. Um, and if you use it in an English language teaching classroom, it's game-based learning. But if you um, integrate some other game elements into bingo, like uh, leaderboards, um, points, rewards, um then you uh you have gamified bingo um okay code of conduct of using gamification in the distance learning environment is a must that's a very good point thank you so much for doing bringing this up ahmed um please um yes if you can comment on this code of conduct yes um in distance education environments or in the classroom, there needs to be, you know, some rules. Uh, you need to have rules in place. Um, so in online learning environment like netiquette rules, everyone needs to be respectful. It, the, the, the game will be played in this order. So if you want participants to play, to contribute to the game in alphabetical order, maybe you can write their names on the screen so you need to explain everything clearly i recommend writing the instructions on a slide so they see and hear um, and please check the instructions take check with your participants check with your students if they have really understood the rules of the game how to play the game because if there are some students who understood and if there are some who haven't understood the rules of the game and how to play the game uh, you need to, you will need to start again, and some of them won't enjoy. So just make sure, you know, repeat um, the instructions again and ask them to repeat the instructions. Ask some concept uh, instruction checking questions. Um, make sure they understand. Um, and there are some rules, such as being respectful, not um, saying, um, so being kind to each other. Um, yes, it will uh, help you uh, manage respect others, manage time, time is important. If there, if you want uh, team members to um, choose the group leader, if this is going to help you manage the um, game, this needs to be done at the beginning. So, you know, step by step, these needs to be done. So, thanks so much, Ahmed, for bringing this up. Um, for best assessment tools of gamification-based um, instruction. 
well, first of all, gamification or games are played, you know, to um, increase participants' participation, motivation, each, um, well, engagement as well. So you can um, perhaps um, get feedback from them. Um, so if you would like to assess the effect of a gamification-based instruction, you can get feedback. Um, you can also see from their engagement, you know, whether they have enjoyed the game or are there things to improve. So I think one of the best assessments also is our reflection. Uh, you can ask another colleague to come and observe you, suggest you some um, ways to improve the game. Uh, you can design it together with another um, colleague. So like team teaching, you know, um, I think if two teachers come together, they can be even more creative. Um, so at the beginning of the next year, you know, when the schools open, maybe you can uh, design some uh, gamified activities together. It doesn't have to be in the classroom. You can use uh, different corners in the school uh, or in the school uh, backyard, or even, you know, you can use um, different, uh, you, you, you need to think outside the box. I think we always think about, you know, classroom as the learning uh, or teaching environment, but we can design games in different uh, corners of the school using different materials. Um, so, um, and get feedback. We need to get feedback from our students, I think, to improve. We need to reflect on them. Um, and if one thing doesn't work, one idea doesn't work, you can try something else. Uh, 